Welcome again to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. In this class, I want to highlight the basic mathematic concepts that are required to understand what we will cover in the course. I will not explain them in depth, so if you have not seen them before or you already forgot them, I strongly encourage you to go over them by yourself as soon as possible. In the context of this course, sounds are discrete uh, signals and the processes that uh, we will develop are discrete systems. Thus, we will require some background on discrete mathematics. The good news is that no calculus is required to follow this course. You just have to know a little bit about sinusoidal functions, complex numbers, Euler's formula, complex sinusoids, scalar product of sequences, even and odd functions, and convolution. And that's not that much. You really don't need much more than this. The rest we will cover and explain in the course. So let me now present these concepts so you can identify what you should review before really starting into our core topics. Our first basic concept is the sine wave. A sinusoidal function or sine wave is a mathematical curve that describes a smooth repetitive oscillation. It occurs often in physics, engineering and many other fields. Here we see the equation of a sine wave. x of n, which is uh, our function, is equal to capital A times the cosine of omega n capital T plus phi. So where A is the amplitude of the sine wave, omega is the angular frequency, so it's expressed in radians, and then uh, nt is basically our time, n is our time index, and capital T is our sampling period, so when we multiply n by capital T, we obtain the uh, t in seconds. And then the phi is the initial phase, also expressed in radians. And the frequency can be expressed also in hertz. So uh, to convert the omega into hertz, we basically have to divide by 2 pi. So omega divided by 2 pi is equal to the frequency in hertz. Okay, the most common visual representation of a sine wave is uh, this one. Uh, so you see here uh, a plot in which uh, we see the time in the horizontal axis and the amplitude in the vertical axis. So we can play it. So this is the sound of this sinusoid. Uh, and in fact, this is the code that generated this sine wave. Uh, all our examples and, uh, and plots will be generated using uh, Python and uh, all the assignments uh, and exercises uh, too. So this is a, a very simplified code for this sine wave in which we see the amplitude, the f uh, which was 0.8, the frequency, which uh, is 1000 Hz, so the frequency we heard uh, is 1000 Hz. Then there is an, an initial phi, which is the initial phase at time 0, it's which uh, time 0 is right in the middle. And then, uh, in order to generate the, the function, we need to generate a time array, which is uh, all the time uh, that uh, we will be displaying. So, a small t is an array that goes from minus 0 0.002 seconds to 0 0.002 seconds, but, of course, sampled at uh, the sampling rate at, uh, at uh, fs. And this is the equation that we actually type into Python to generate uh, uh, the sine wave. Okay, so um, another uh, needed uh, basic concept is the one of complex numbers, which are numbers that are built of two parts. One part is what we call real part, and the other is the imaginary part. So uh, A would be uh, the real part, and B would be the imaginary part. In order to, to uh, represent the imaginary part, we multiply by j, which is the imaginary unit, uh, is, uh, is the square root of minus 1. So jb uh, composes the imaginary part. 
And then uh, these numbers, these complex numbers, are normally represented in what we call the complex plane, shown here, in which the real part is the horizontal axis, so is the is plotted on the horizontal axis, and the imaginary part, the B value, is uh, plotted in the uh, vertical uh, uh, axis. And then we normally have this circle, which is uh, magnitude 1. So this is what we call the unit circle. In here are all the complex numbers that have magnitude uh, 1. A complex number can be expressed in two ways, in what we call rectangular form or in polar form. The rectangular form is the most direct uh, form in which we explicitly uh, express the A value, the real part, and B, the imaginary uh, value. And therefore, the intersection of these two values in the complex plane uh, with this cross is, uh, is the actual complex uh, number. In polar form, what we do is we consider this uh, complex number, this cross, as the tip of a vector with origin at uh, 0, 0. Therefore, as a vector, it has a magnitude, which is capital A, that can be computed from A and B as the square root of the sum of the squares, and then it also has an angle, and also can be computed from A and B by computing the inverse tangent of B over A. The polar form representation makes the sum and multiplication operations of complex numbers more intuitive. For us, that will be a great advantage. And we will use the polar form representation of complex numbers and functions whenever possible. Now, let's combine signs and complex numbers. Euler's equation establishes a very useful relationship between rectangular and polar coordinates of a complex number. So, the number e to the j phi, which is a, a complex exponential, can be expressed as the sum of a cosine plus a sine, a real part, cosine phi, plus an imaginary part, j sine phi. And we can go back and forth uh, in the two directions. So we can start from, from the complex exponential and obtain the, the real part, cosine phi, or the imaginary part, sine phi, and the other way around. It's a nice uh, uh, looking formula, and in fact the physicist uh, Richard Feynman uh, called this equation the, the most remarkable formula in, in mathematics. If we show this in the, in the complex plane, in this diagram that we show here, we can see these uh, components that we mentioned. So we see the complex value as the e to the j phi, which since has magnitude 1 is in the unit circle. And we can see uh, the, the real part and the imaginary part, one being the real part cosine phi, the imaginary part being sine phi. So this formula will be fundamental uh, to understand the discrete Fourier transform. So we will come back to it uh, uh, later. Now, by using sinusoids, complex numbers, and what we just have seen, the Euler's formula, we can introduce uh, complex uh, sinusoids. So in, in this case, the function x of n with, with, a, with a bar is a complex sinusoid. So it can be expressed with uh, this complex exponential uh, that we just introduced. And there are several ways to represent the same, uh, the same function uh, and using uh, this Euler's identity. So please uh, go through this equation and make sure that uh, you understand it. Uh, we will normally be working with real signals, thus real sinusoids. And we'll have to go from complex sinusoids, the ones that Fourier transform work with, to real sinusoids. So in here we see the equation of a real sinusoid that we, we saw before. So capital A amplitude uh, times the cosine of omega nt plus phi as can be expressed with the sum of complex sine waves. Okay, so a complex uh, sine wave, if we sum two of them, can generate a real sine wave. In fact, that seems too complicated and, and not so intuitive, but uh, it's, a, it's a very useful mathematical trick that Fourier uses, that in the Fourier transform we need 
to uh, be able to understand. Um, so that basically says that summing two complex sine waves, we can cancel the imaginary component of the sinusoids and keep the real part, which is what we normally are going to be interested in. To plot a complex sine wave uh, is not easy. Uh, we would need uh, to show it in a 3D space. And a common alternative is to plot the real and imaginary components as two separate functions. So in here we see uh, the real and imaginary sinusoid. So the, in blue is the real part. So it's a cosine. And in green is the imaginary part. So it's a sine function. And that's how we're going to be uh, uh, plotting uh, these uh, complex uh, sine waves. Another concept to be familiar with is the scalar or dot product, a common algebraic operation between sequences. This is an operation that takes two equal length uh, sequences of numbers and returns a single value. This operation can be defined either geometrically or algebraically, and algebraically is the sum of the products of the corresponding entries of the two sequences of numbers, as is shown here. So we have the sequence x, sequence uh, y, and we just sum over the sample-to-sample uh, -sample product of each uh, of these uh, sequences. And we can show it in an example. So if we have an example uh, x of n, uh, a simple sequence, and y of n, another simple sequence, complex sequences, their dot product will be the point-to-point -point multiplication uh, of these two sequences. However, the second sequence is uh, conjugated. So we see here the minus j of the second sequence because if, uh, we conjugated the j of the second sequence. And then if we do the whole operation, we obtain a um, number. So the, the scalar product means that we return a single number uh, after uh, doing the, the operation with two sequences. An important property of the scalar product is that when two sequences are orthogonal, their scalar product is equal to zero. So here we see uh, uh, this, uh, this concept, uh, x is orthogonal to y if and only if the scalar product of x times y is equal to zero. Uh, so, geometrically, the dot product can be understood as the projection of one sequence into another. And maybe in this uh, diagram, uh, we can see this concept. So, we have two uh, sequences, very short sequences. Uh, one is composed of the values 2 and 2, and the other is composed of the value 2 and minus 2, which in the two-dimensional space uh, are orthogonal. I mean, we see them one uh, being perpendicular to the other. So, and we can prove that by doing the dot product of x uh, times uh, y. And so if we do this operation as shown here, we uh, can prove that is equal to zero. So the dot product of these two sequences is zero. And this is a basic operation that is performed by the discrete Fourier transform. Another mathematical concept that will appear in our signal analysis operations is the one of even and odd functions. So uh, a function is even if uh, the negative part of the function, so if we say f of minus n, is equal to f of n. So that is what we call a symmetric function. A odd function is when f of minus n is equal to the minus f of n. And this is what we call an anti-symmetric uh, signal. Uh, so the case of the two uh, functions that we have been talking about, cosines and, and sines, very much uh, exemplify these two types of, uh, of properties. A cosine is an even function uh, because it's symmetric around the origin, about the point zero. And the sine uh, is an odd function because it's anti-symmetric around zero we have this anti-symmetry. Uh, okay? So uh, this is going to be uh, also uh, relevant in some of the things we will be talking about. 
The last concept I want to mention is the one of convolution of sequences. This is a mathematical operation of two sequences, producing a third sequence that can be viewed as a modified version of one of the original sequences. Here we see the equation of convolution. I don't have time to go into the detail, but uh, please uh, try to understand it. And also we can see it graphically. If we have these two sequences, x sub 1, x sub 2, that have different shapes, the resulting uh, sequence, the, the convolved uh, um, result, is a much smoother function. Um, and uh, it's um, a quite uh, kind of a combination of these two uh, sequences. So convolution is, is similar to cross-correlation. It's a common operation used to implement filtering of sounds, and it is also useful to understand uh, several of the properties of the Fourier transform. So the concepts I highlighted in this lecture are extensively covered in many textbooks. Uh, most of the references I use come from Wikipedia and from the website of uh, Julius, uh, Julius Smith, on the mathematics of the discrete Fourier transform, reference that I very much uh, recommend uh, that uh, you go through. Uh, so if you want uh, more information in Wikipedia, I, ha I have uh, highlighted uh, some of the relevant entries and uh, the, the website of Julius for uh, the book and again uh, the standard attribution of all the content that uh, I am using in this uh, course. And this is all for this lecture. Uh, we have identified the basic mathematical concepts uh, that will be very much needed throughout the course. Please make sure that you get a grasp of them before we start the Fourier topics. Thanks for your attention.